Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Retro Lectors. And today we're gonna discuss the Sega Dreamcast Mini that was announced last week. Year to year, Sega announces something new to their fans. And year to year, we're awaiting something big. And year to year, we always question, where's the Dreamcast Mini? Well, we got some kind of news with the hopes of it being more than just a rumor. In an article from Famitsu, Sega creative producer Yosuke Okunari Yusuke Okunari Definitely butchered that name May have announced that the Dreamcast Mini is a possibility So today we're going to look at 30 games that should make it on the Sega Dreamcast Mini And we're going to rate them from must have, should have, and please have This list is totally based off of licenses not being an issue So Capcom, Midway, and other licensed companies that made games for the Dreamcast can make their way onto the Dreamcast Mini. These 30 games make up one eighth of the North American Dreamcast library. And I'm not gonna cover PAL games in this list. This is solely gonna be North American. So for those of you PAL owners, I'll probably make a list for that in the near future. I haven't played any PAL games. Also, if the Sega Dreamcast Mini is an actual thing, some games may be omitted and they should be under the hopeful list of games that should be included due to their use of peripherals like light guns, keyboards, fishing rods, and other such like peripherals on the console. To start this off, the must have column. We're gonna have obviously Sonic Adventure, Crazy Taxi, Virtual Tennis, just because it's a great tennis game, a great sports game to have into this collection of 30 games and the mini games alone are just um, so much fun to play. So this should be automatically included in the must have list. Hydro Thunder, great racer. The wave physics in this are unreal and it's such so much fun. It's a two player head to head is just unreal. I'll call it classic. You can't think of the Dreamcast without thinking of one of these few games and that's Jet Grind Radio. It's cult status has reached phenomenal heights and this is a game that should go into this library without a question. Marvel vs. Capcom. I included the first one just because to get the feet wet of the fighting franchise. I do have Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I just feel that this could be a nice early entry into the list. NBA 2K, a great sports title. I could have went with 2K1 or 2K2. I went with 2K because this game was hands down one of the best when it came out. I would love to see an updated roster. I know that Sega will not do that. They'll probably, if they do it, just port the game to one to one, but an updated roster would be unreal. Just change the names, a little bit of texture changes, and that would, that would just be unreal. You can't have a fighting game without a 3D fighter, and that's Power Stone. It's a great fighter that should be included and should be played, if not on the mini, on any console. If you can get your hands on the PlayStation Portable version of it, the collections, it's such a great game to play and so much fun. This list is not short of fighters, and this is a little bit of an arcadey fighter, and that's Ready to Rumble such fun you can't play this game and not have a blast each character brings their own style of fighting and it's over the top fun sega gt one of the best racers on the console 60 frames a second was not an issue in this game and this should make it on the list no matter what another fighter on the list soul caliber this was the reason why i bought my dreamcast at launch when i saw this game it was jaw dropping i never seen a console have a game that looked this good this polished and better in the arcades than when i went to the arcades to play it and a real fun beat em up dynamite cop it's very short very linear but a hell of a lot of fun. Now we're onto the should haves category. These are games that should be on the console and can be replaced by the please haves just because the please haves are so good. It would be a shame to exclude them, but these games are nothing to wag a stick at. We'll get started with one of the best games on the console, Shenmue. One of the first open world games I've ever played. The things that you could do, the things you could see that happen in real time, in game time, it's, it's so good. The ability to go anywhere, in and out of shops, the ability to go to different cities on the bus, was just an amazing feat of technology at that point in time. A puzzle game that still makes its way onto consoles today, Choo Choo Rocket. It's a over the top puzzler that has you controlling mice and you must get them to the rocket ship before you're eaten alive. And four player couch co-op would be so much fun on this new Dreamcast Mini if this was an actual thing. So hopefully they do have four player ports and do sell Dreamcast controllers separately or even include them in the box. I know they'll make a killing either way. Daytona USA, a really good racer that gets some flack as far as it not being as good as the Sega Saturn version, but it is a good game nonetheless. I think they should still make this list no matter what. The controls are somewhat slippery, but it's still a great game to play. Egg or Elemental Gimmick Gear is an unbelievable RPG that has not seen a light of day since the Dreamcast. 
It's so good. It should see a remake, a remaster, or even just a port to the Dreamcast Mini. The Sega Dreamcast is known for wacky and over the top gimmicks and Toy Commander was one of those gimmicks where you're a toy and you're being controlled by a little child and using his imagination to control your toys through a 3D environment. It's so dynamic. It goes from planes to cars to helicopters. It's just a, such a dynamic game that's so much fun and it has you using your wits to get you through your 3D environment of an actual kitchen or an actual bedroom. This game should be played nowadays and should be on the Sega Dreamcast Mini. Another racing game that makes this list is F355 Challenge. I remember playing this in arcades and sitting down in the seat and having a screen wrapped around you so you could see cars whiz by you while racing or you could see the outside of your side window and that was unbelievable at the time. Another game I followed from development and that's Code Veronica. The Dreamcast has its horror genre covered pretty well. Code Veronica was something I followed from its early development and seeing this on magazine clippings and seeing the unbelievable graphics at the time was jaw dropping. And this game still holds up to today by Resident Evil standards. We're gonna enter the shooter category and that's gonna be with Gigawing. Playing this game with Unlimited Continues, is the only way you can play this game, at least in my opinion. I cannot play this game without using multiple continues and playing this on the Dreamcast Mini, you'll see why. We have another racer on this list, MSR, the introduction of Project Gotham Racing later on the Xbox. This was the introduction of the Kudo system. Take a turn too fast, but be able to pull it off, you get a reward for that. And this game was a great entry into the Dreamcast library. Another fighter, but a 3D fighter. Project Justice, the sequel to Rival Schools on the PlayStation. This game is a, such a great fighter. Be able to fill the screen with tag team battles and fill the screen up with unbelievable triple techniques to take down your opponents. This game is such a great fighter and is overlooked by many because the Dreamcast has such a great library of fighters. Speaking of great library of fighters, one of my favorite on the console, Street Fighter Third Strike. If you wanna see this game in action and played by professionals, Head up on YouTube and you can see some unbelievable competitions playing in this game. It's such a great fighter, well balanced, well put together of characters. It's such a great game and it should be on this Dreamcast Mini, again, pending license agreements. And lastly, this can be replaced, but I still enjoyed it and that's Trick Style. It's a great hoverboard racer, 3D environments. It's a little bit lopsided as far as difficulty goes, but it's not that bad. It's a great entry into this list and tops up the racing category quite well. Now we're on to the please have. Like I stated earlier, the please haves can be replaced by any one of these games, but because they're continuations of some of the must have titles, I think something like Sonic Adventure 2 should be added just because you have Sonic Adventure 1, but can be quickly replaced by any one of the up and coming games. Another sequel, Crazy Taxi 2, another arguably one of the best fighters on the console, Marvel vs. Capcom, can quickly replace any of these top games right off the bat, but I think the first entry should be the one that you play first because I think it's just well-rounded. I love the second one, don't get me wrong, but I think the first one should be in over the second, hopefully does make the list eventually. Another game that's a sequel to the Power Stone, and that's Power Stone 2, hopefully with four player support, such a great game. I still prefer Power Stone 1, but this is a great entry into the series. The one game that we wait and wait and wait for Sega to announce a remake, remaster, and that's Skies of Arcadia. One of the best RPGs on any console, bar none, come at me, bro. A game that's so ridiculously expensive in the North American library, and that's Cannon Spike. It's such a great game. Kinda short, kinda unfair but I still love this game no matter what. Its introduction of multiple characters from multiple different franchises should make this list regardless. A game just because it's a fishing game, Sega Bass Fishing. Hopefully with a peripheral support, but if not, you can still play with a controller and still have a great time. Such a great game, easily played and easily enjoyed. Another one with four player support, Gauntlet Legends. One of the last gauntlets I've played and I've enjoyed every second of it. Another game with peripheral issues and that's House of the Dead. Again, could be quickly replaced with any one of the games on the list originally, but because it doesn't have peripheral support with the light guns and light guns are being a little bit of an issue on modern TVs, 
You still can't play with a controller, but it's not the same without light gun support. Another well-rounded fighter on the list, Capcom versus SNK. Such a great game. Oh my goodness, it's, this is top three fighters on the console for me for sure. And if you haven't played it, just try to emulate it. It's just a great game, so well-rounded. A racing title that should be on the list, but can be overlooked. And that's Sega Rally 2, one of my favorite racers on the console. I just find it so well-rounded and so well put together with like dynamic effects and unbelievable replays and just such a great game. Another anime title that should make the list, hopefully, Sword of the Berserk, Guts Rage, a great adventure title. It's kind of a mix of Devil May Cry, but the controls can be a little bit off-putting. Floygan Brothers, a game that should have, hopefully, added episodes and some stuff that was missing from the original game because this is just episode one. Hopefully Sega does find and release some of their other DLC episodes as an actual finished game or somewhat finished game because I don't believe they got that much further than their DLC parts. And lastly, a game that can quickly replace any of these and that's Shenmue 2. With the inclusion of Shenmue 1, you have to have the Shenmue 2. This is PAL version that was burned over to North American and I played through it this year. I love it. It's such a great game. I play Shenmue probably yearly, once a year. And playing this game, it goes down as one of the greatest games on the Dreamcast. And there you have it, 30 games. Hard to decide which ones to add and which ones to subtract. There are games that I know I've missed. A full library contains 248 games. But to narrow that down to just 30 is an impossible feat. There are some genres I know I've missed, but I feel I covered the majority of the best games on the console and should make its way to the Sega Dreamcast Mini. Hopefully these rumors are true and we do get a Dreamcast Mini in the future. What games do you hope to see on it? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this next video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks guys.